I wanted to shoot in Garland and I looked for locations everywhere and Garland doesn't look like the Garland of my youth anymore. It's like up and coming. Grand Prairie looked more like the Garland that I knew back then. Yeah. Yeah. Did you show either of your leads the short film? I didn't. I think maybe Cammy watched it. Uh, I I think my agents had it and might have sent it to people who requested it, but I know my one of them, and I could be getting wrong who watched it. One of them wanted to see it. The other one was like, I don't want to, I don't want to accidentally take from you know the other girl's performance. But did they go to you though? Obviously, with it being, I mean, autobiographical. I mean, how much did they pick from you, or did they want to come in it differently? Uh, they came in it with their own stuff, and so both of them. You know, we, we had talked by Skype first and discussed the role and discussed the script and, and all of these things. And then they sent in their auditions. And for me, it wasn't about matching the person that I'd been. Once you write into a script, it becomes its own world, the own, their own characters. And then it was about finding an energy that felt right for that, that story and for those characters, which they both brought. And then you make small tweaks from there. But once you get, like, the right cast directing becomes way easier, way easier. What about you? You did bring back some people. I noticed like Craig Cole was in there. As well. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's you great. You changed Officer Pudding though, which was a bit oh, of a shock. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah. how did you? How did you? Do, I mean, it's a lot of local casting that we kind of know. Yes. But tell us a bit about Kyle and some of the other people you're able to to get into. This yeah. So the local cast. I mean, like couldn't face the cop. The the asshole cop. He he was written that way. He was written as like you know a good old boy who you know had like this like really strong tough demeanor so when we went to remake it I was like I really want to I want to get that person you know who you just look at them and you're just intimidated by them and then they you know whatever so that's that's kind of how we got Max Hartman who was fantastic and then the girls we just went through agents in uh, Los Angeles and I saw a bunch of girls audition at the time and then when we put them together for chemistry readings these two were clearly the ones who fit most appropriately for the movie and then with Kyle I actually I'd seen a ton of actors and you know Chris was in the first one he was amazing um, but when we went to to reshoot it He was just a little older than, than, like, I don't know, it just, like, the girls were a little younger feeling, so, but anyway, so we found, my daughter actually recommended Kyle, she was like, or she, she was just like, he'd be so good in this, and I'm like, yeah, if I had Kyle Mooney's phone number, I would call him and ask him to do this, totally, and so she was like, you should just try and get in touch with him, find out, you know, maybe he'd be interested in doing it, and, and I was like, alright, I'll see what I can find out, and so I went on IMDb, saw that he had the same manager as a friend of mine and so I wrote my friend I was like hey can you put me in touch with your manager I have a project that Kyle might want to do and uh, and so he put me in touch manager read it he loved it he sent it to Kyle Kyle read it and loved it and next thing you knew he was here in my movie amazing. it was amazing yeah I cried I actually <laughs> remember sitting on my living room floor like he's gonna do it I can't believe it's gonna be in my movie it was so surreal I can't imagine it without him so uh, yeah, thanks. He just absolutely yeah. was it. He's fantastic. <laughs> He's so funny. Yeah. And uh, the guy who was the uh, the owner of the place. The oh yeah, guy. Ray yeah. Gaston. Um, yeah. Is, is he local or? Is He's he a local actor. actor. He's outstanding, right? I just. Yeah. I, I couldn't. I, I kept thinking maybe I'd seen him in something else. I, I thought he was me, but I couldn't place him. But then when they were when they were in the grocery store, and I first saw him, I thought, oh yeah, it's and then it went away. He's done a bunch of theater. Maybe if you see theater. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, I kind of figured with Max's theater that that might have been a connection because Max has done a lot of theater. Oh, yeah. No, for all the local, we went through Tisha Blood at uh, Buffalo Casting. 
and found all these incredible local actors. You brought up Athena, your daughter. Yeah. She has one of the best roles in the movie. Yeah, thanks, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was it like? It must have been kind of ironic. She's kind of, she's speaking essentially to your old self. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> that's yeah. true, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> and in reality, she's nothing like that person. She's so chill that I always have to give her like a very uncomfortable role because it's just funny to me to see her be very sassy and like judgmental which she's not but yeah it was funny and you you had a female DP you and Courtney edited it uh, Liz was one of your major producers yes it's so all women I mean yes. I know David and other people involved James and Dylan, yeah but this is a woman oh yeah film. costume design makeup production design almost every head of department was a woman yeah it was the best I love I mean you don't I never set out and said everything has to be every position has to be filled by a woman I never said that but what I did want was to open up the opportunity to as many women as I could because if you say okay we're gonna interview five people for a DP you're gonna get five references and they're probably all going to be men and so it's just saying ahead of time all right if i'm going to see five people then three of them need to be women and so if we don't get immediate references for three women i'm going to seek out three women to put in these interview slots because inevitably yeah they're out there and same with actors when you're auditioning actors that are non-white actors you're inevitably going to get the majority of the people are going to be white people who come in and read for these roles and so you have to designate ahead of time I need to see at least this many actors who are not white coming in to read for these roles because otherwise they're gonna get lost in the shuffle they just don't aren't as many that exist and so same with women in these roles and then they were just right you know they're just good and I love that female energy and I I love that um, I don't know from the costumes production design make of all of it there's something so authentic to the female experience and because it is such a you know a female movie there are things that I just might not have thought about that they bring to it and elevate the project in a way you know that just made it so much more special did you look at or did you give the girls any films to like buddy comedies or anything to connect them I mean, I, uh, I immediately thought yeah. of like Spring Breakers, but yeah. then I thought back like Step Brothers might work too. I mean, Step Brothers is one of my favorites, totally. Yeah, it's exactly that. It's that, and it's like Romy and Michelle, Thelma and Louise. Yeah, I don't feel. I mean, I, as far as Spring Breakers goes, it's a totally different tone. You know, you see two girls who just want to get to the beach, and it's the first thing that comes to mind, and it is kind of it's not slick it's like a little rougher and dirtier and lived in so there there is that connection but as far as the story goes this is uh this is much more about like the friendship and the heart of these two girls relationships but um they yeah, the family, they are the family. Yeah, they don't I mean, exactly. The family has, exactly. I mean, even the brother, I mean, he's like a brother, but he's... Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, he's, he, you know. Yeah. We have to pay rent. Yeah, exactly. Not exactly. <laughs> he's not pulling his weight and he's not a good role model. And, you know, <laughs> he just, all he does is get everybody in trouble. Exactly. He's just there for that. He just seems so innocent. Yeah. I love like in a scheme about the TV, whatever that was, was like, they steal the TV, and you girls go to Jimmy. Yeah, it's so unfair. It's like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's his fault. It was some kind of a high, they had, were they going to try to get insurance collect? I don't know, what was the deal? Oh, for the deal. stealing the TV? Yeah, what was the point of stealing the TV? Uh, who knows? That actually happened in my life. I guess they thought that they were going to go sell it and make some money. I don't know. And it didn't even work. It was like, that was the initial story. Oh, the that, didn't. Yeah, yeah. Like that inspired it. Like that actually happened. I'm like, why would they do this? It's so yeah. stupid. But anyway, yeah. Yeah, that's what my, my mother-in-law had a TV stolen from her house here in Oak Cliff once. After that, they locked the doors. Okay. They never locked the doors till the end. Crazy. And then somebody came in and stole it. But it had to be a small TV. In those days, you couldn't, you know, those consoles, you couldn't pick them up. So this was a, you know, the TV really wasn't worth anything because it was one of those 
You even have well, that joke. They say, you're not going to be able to pick this up. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But the truth, the actual story is, we had a massive console TV, and it worked as the shelf for the, the TV that worked. Oh, no. yeah. 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 And so you set it on top. This guy had been over the night before playing video games on our working TV, came over the next morning, lifted the good TV off, set it aside, and picked up this massive console <laughs> TV and like waddled out. I mean, he was like five foot six at most, like carrying this huge TV. <laughs> so I was thinking back to that as the most absurd thing I'd ever seen. It's like eight in the morning, stealing this stupid TV, but anyway. And then they end up going to jail. I mean, we called the cops, they immediately got arrested like down the street it was so silly but it was stuff like that that it's like okay this could be this dramatic moment where they broke in and like robbed us in the morning and we were scared but it wasn't it was so ridiculous <laughs> like all right this is uh this is not the material for a drama this is like comedic bullshit yeah how much fun was it shooting the party sequence i love you track in and outside yeah i love that toby's in it too yeah yeah it's a nice little cameo but like shooting that sequence can you talk about because you do you go in and back out and it's it's seamless yeah that's my dp and our steady cam operator they were just super talented we actually shot that here in oak cliff um at a house not far from here um it was super fun had a bunch of extras you know got the music going girls got to dance and you know it was a really good time music wise you got a pretty big local name too Sarah Jaffe, that that must be amazing to have her yeah. put on it. Yeah, she's fantastic. I mean, I when I set out to make this, I was hoping we would be lucky enough to have her agree to do it. I just love her music, and she's got that right vibe. I mean, all of her, because she is Texas, and because this movie is the epitome of like a Texas film, it just felt right, and she just nailed it. Nailed it. I guess lastly, with A24 taking over and I mean, this is going to get a, a good size release. This must be kind of surreal for you. You're yeah. But to put this out into the world. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's very surreal. It's weird because um, you always imagine making a film and it going out and playing theaters and what that would feel like. But I probably won't know what that feels like until like two months from now when I can look back on it and be like, oh, that's what that experience was. Because when you're in it, it's just moving so fast and things are coming and it's all happening and, and it's it, it's like a whirlwind and it's just hard to process in the moment. It's very exciting, <laughs> but I think in two months I'll be able to look back and be like, oh yeah, I remember. <laughs> that's what that felt like. But yeah, I'm grateful if nothing else. Is he telling us to go? Yeah, I think we were going to... Well, do you mind us? Yeah, go ahead. Are you working on anything now? I mean, anything you can slip? I know you've got a lot on your Yeah, I've table. got the... I just uh, directed the pilot for HBO called Euphoria, which got picked up. It should be premiering on HBO next year. And then I'm doing the Ryan Reynolds uh, home... Uh, it's called Stoned Alone. Directing that for Fox. It's a, it's a comedy uh, in the Home Alone world. And it's hilarious, but also it's a Christmas film that's super sweet with a ton of heart, and and I just love it. I'm excited. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much.